I think to have a platform where all stakeholders of global society are engaged. Like, are you, what is that? Like, that's just like central casting evil villain. That's like, what a, that's what a joke that is. We'll talk more about him. Like, if you were casting a movie for the evil villain and he tried out, you'd be like, nah, it's too on the nose. You can't. We'll talk more about him with our guests coming up in a little bit. Now, we did a special last year on how the World Economic Forum is trying to get you to eat more bugs. I just want to do the very short of that because it's a lot of other things there too. But again, it's a perfect metaphor. Um, they want you to eat bugs because they say that meat is bad for the planet. It takes up too much land, too much water. Cows emit too much methane gas, which contributes to global warming. Uh, they say that cows contribute more to global warming than cars, trains, ships, and planes combined. So they want to get rid of meat and they're gonna replace the protein with uh, bugs. This is why New York City schools uh, have meatless Mondays and they also have vegan Fridays. So two out of the five days of the week, there's no meat. This is all to indoctrinate young kids. Uh, de Blasio said, cutting back on meat uh, will improve New Yorkers' health and reduce greenhouse gas emissions, keeping our planet uh, green for generations to come. But they got to replace the meat with something, right? So they're going to replace it with the protein from bugs. Now, if people scoff at this, right? You may say, Slater, that's ridiculous. I'll never eat bugs. Yes, you will. You will. Now, first of all, your kids will. And grandkids will because they won't know any different because they'll slowly implement this. But you'll eat bugs. Do you know you already eat rapeseed? Do you know you eat rapeseed? If I told you the World Economic Forum is trying to get you to eat rapeseed, you'd be like, I'm not going to eat rapeseed. You already are. They just call it canola oil. Because who's going to eat rapeseed? <laughs> uh, now, this stuff's disgusting. Canola. This is, we got a little B roll here. This is the production process of canola oil. So you eat that. They can get you to eat bugs. When's the last time you ever read the ingredients of something and it's full of a bunch of chemicals and you're like, oh, I'll never eat that. And you put it back and it's like, never. Like we eat a bunch of crap. So of course they can add bugs to the mix. Now they're not gonna say, hey, here's a bowl full of cockroaches, like in Fear Factor. They're not, that's not what they're gonna do. They're gonna grind it up. They grind it up, add a bunch of chemicals and colors and say, hey, here's your mealworm pizza sauce. Here's your mealworm bread. But they're not gonna call it mealworm. They'll call it like, a1 protein powder or something. Here's your A1 protein bread. And people are like, hmm, delicious. And they'll say, better for the planet. And then the government will subsidize it and uh, incentivize the globalist food companies to put this in their products. And because all the CEOs of our food production go to the World Economic Forum and they want to be good globalists and keep getting invited, they'll go along with this uh, and with this worldview that says we know better and people should eat bugs. So here's how it works. These are, uh, here's a video of ground up mealworm. All this cake needs is flour, eggs, and 20 grams of dead insects. No, you haven't misheard. A team of scientists at Belgium's University of Ghent are trying to find a way to substitute dairy in cakes, cookies, and waffles. They say deriving grease from insects is more green than dairy production. By soaking the insects in a little bit of water and then mushing them with a kitchen blender before centrifuges separate a butter-like substance, a grease is made which the team used to bake with. But how does it go down outside of the lab? For me there's no difference, <laughs> so um, it's, uh, it's, it's actually better. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you would eat insect fat cakes again? Yeah, yeah. Why, not? why not? The team say that consumers can't taste the difference when a quarter of the milk butter is replaced with the fat from the insects. But they start to notice when it gets to the halfway mark. So who knows? One day you could be munching on a cockroach croissant as you head to the office or making your nearest and dearest a beetle birthday cake. <laughs> cockroach croissant. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So you're saying, oh, it's like, ridiculous. I'll never do this. People don't want this. This is uh, this year's World Economic Forum. This is the head of Siemens talking about the need to eat bugs. My daughter, 24, inspired me and said that, how can you advocate for these zero carbon value chains if you still eat meat? And so I stopped eating meat. Now the math would say, well, you need to stop eating meat uh, 11 years to compensate for a flight to Thailand. Yes, 
But if a billion people stop eating meat, I tell you it has a big impact. I predict that we will have proteins not coming from um, meat in the future. They will probably taste even better. So why are we trying to mimic meat if we can have a better taste? They will be zero carbon and much healthier than the kind of food that we eat today. That is a mission that we need to get on. That's a mission. Right? It's just some uh, cockroach croissants. What's the problem? Just some uh, centrifuged grease-like substance from mealworms. I predict we will have proteins that don't come from meat in the future. Bill Gates said the developing world should still eat meat, but the first world doesn't need to be eating any more meat. Uh, I should say Siemens, by the way, they're a giant, massive company in Germany. Uh, they make like nuclear power plants and high-speed rail lines. There's like huge, big thing. So it's an influential company. This is the head of Unilever. Uh, maybe you've seen this infographic before. These are the 10 uh, biggest food companies. And you can see they own all food. I should put that in quotes. They own all the processed food that we eat. There's just like 10 companies and Unilever is kind of like the bottom middle there. So here's the head of Unilever. Our innovation is focused on products that you will eat every day, but that solves some of these problems. So four big areas, and I'll be pretty quick on those. Um, first of all, more plant-based eating, big focus for us. Um, because if we all ate a little bit less meat every day, it would go a long way in solving that emissions problem, and it's healthier for us too. So um, you get to products like Ben & Jerry's Dairy Free or Vegan Magnum, delicious. <laughs> don't have to change your habits, um, but they're vegan and they don't use cows. Yeah, there you go. So that gets rounds of applause from their peers, and then they push it upon you. And you think I'm crazy with this, but the European Union just approved two insects for food at the European Union. Crickets and mealworms and all these said, uh, or I predict they hinted and uh, that they'll be the first major grocery store to be selling crickets in their food. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching that clip about the World Economic Forum. Super important to understand what's going on. But the thing is when you learn about this stuff, I don't know, but my anxiety goes up. It's like di global digital IDs and like we're not allowed to eat meat anymore. We're gonna eat bugs. Like what are you talking about? So I get very anxious. So that's why I started this podcast. It's called Politics by Faith. So what we do is we take the story of the day, we break it down, we lament the brokenness, but then we provide some historical perspective and some biblical peace to understand that there's nothing new under the sun. And then what we can do to get through this, even more than get through it, what we can do to, to win. So that's what the podcast is all about. You can give it a download, it's free of course, wherever you listen to your podcast, uh, Politics by faith and you can watch you can feel the anxiety wash away